Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today is a sad day for the 2.59% of people who still use Windows 8.1, because less than a decade after its initial release, Microsoft has killed off support for the operating system. To the surprise of nobody, of course. This is something that happens with every Windows version that's ever been released. And whenever it does, I like to do a retrospective type video where we revisit the operating system to take one last look at it. Although I did seem to miss Windows 8's end of support back in 2016, but let's not talk about that. But wait, you say, didn't Windows 7 support end in 2020? Why would Microsoft give Windows 8 the axe first? Well, that's the interesting thing about Windows 8.1. I tend to think of it as being similar to Windows 98 Second Edition. It wasn't really an entirely new version of Windows, but more so an update to an existing one. In fact, calling it a service pack would be an even better comparison. And it made sense for Microsoft to end support for Windows 8 early, because unlike 98 Second Edition, 8.1 was a free upgrade to all existing Windows 8 users, so you were kind of expected to update to it. And oh boy, would you want to update to it, because Windows 8.1 brought back that glorious start button, the thing that made Windows, Windows for so long. I mean, it was kind of the entire identity of the operating system for a while, until Microsoft, for some reason, decided to completely get rid of it in Windows 8 in a half-baked attempt to make the system more tablet-friendly, despite the fact that most people who use Windows did so on devices that didn't have a touchscreen. Yeah, you can't really talk about Windows 8.1 without mentioning its predecessor. Windows 8 was met with a ton of criticism when it launched, and it was well designed deserved. Microsoft's idea of making the OS more touch-based didn't sit well with traditional PC users, and it resulted in many just refusing to upgrade entirely, opting instead to stick with the more familiar and comfortable UI that Windows 7 offered. That's why I've always viewed 8.1 as being designed to rein in the overcorrection towards a tablet-centric UI that Windows 8 introduced, to encourage desktop PC users to upgrade to it. It certainly wasn't perfect, but it brought some welcome changes. As mentioned, the start button is back right where it was pre-Windows 8, and although it still opens up the full screen start interface, you are able to bypass it entirely and log in straight to the desktop, instead of having to deal with the start screen every frickin' time you logged into your PC. Yeah, you remember that nonsense? You had to download a third-party program to do this in Windows 8. I know, I know, these aren't really features at all, they're just the way Windows was before. But I was personally pretty glad that Microsoft seemed to be listening to desktop PC users again, because it felt like Windows 8 was a betrayal, a demotion to an afterthought while the tablet took center stage. 8.1 was a step in the right direction, and it eventually led to the reintroduction of the start menu in Windows 10. Again, it was far from perfect. But as with anything that's met with initial outrage, people just kind of get used to it after a while. It doesn't mean that they necessarily like everything about it, but you learn to accept it. I used Windows 8.1 for a couple years before I upgraded to Windows 10, and honestly, I don't remember complaining that much. In fact, it was actually pretty fine. If you ignore the full screen Metro UI and install a third party start menu as I did, it just felt like another standard desktop release of Windows, though it was in no way the best Windows release ever. And the Metro UI still being there brought with it a substantial learning curve, especially for novice users switching from Windows 7. But despite my gripes with it, I do have a bit of a soft spot for the Metro UI. It's clean, simple, and actually pretty great to use on a touchscreen. And I think people wouldn't hate it so much if it had a desktop mode of sorts. Something like Windows 10 start menu with the option to switch to a full screen one I think would have been far better received from the very beginning. But even with Windows 8.1's changes, it still wasn't enough to win over the majority of desktop users, hence its tiny market share today. There's still more computers running Windows 7 even though it's been out of support for three years now. And that's why this end of support deadline will have far less of an impact on people than Windows 7's or Windows XP's. But it's still something worth commemorating, and that's why we're going to unbox and install this sealed copy of Windows 8.1 to give it a proper send-off. All right, here it is in all of its glory, our sealed copy of Windows 8.1. This would have set you back $120 back in 2013, or $200 if you opted to get Windows 8.1 Pro. So let's go ahead and without any further ado, grab our kind of oversized pair of scissors here for this box and cut a slit right there in the shrink wrap. 
and let's go ahead and open this up. You know, I received this copy back in 2021, at the end of 2021, from a garage sale, and I was kind of wondering if I should open it up, but of course, Windows 8.1's end of support seems like a better time than ever. So you've got this outer sleeve here with the SKU and everything on the top, Windows 8.1 32-bit slash 64-bit English DVD, of course, and you've got your little inner packaging here. And this is the license key. It comes on a card here. I'll flip that over and yep, that is indeed the product key. So it's nice that they include it on here. I've actually never unboxed a physical copy of Windows 8 or Windows 8.1 before. So this is definitely a first for me. And yeah, so you got a little welcome to Windows booklet which is like your getting started guide. It tells you of course about the start screen, the charms menu, all that good stuff. It tells you how to install it, insert the disk, follow the steps, enter your key. And uh, they've got, if you're on a tablet or a touchscreen device, you do this. This is how you do it on a computer, uh, which of course is the bottom one here, as in it was secondary. It was the afterthought, right? Uh, yeah, so, and you've got two separate DVDs, one for 32-bit and one for 64-bit. We're going to use the 64-bit DVD because we're going to install this on our totally legit MacBook Pro. Uh, this is, of course, the HP compact 6510b that you all will know very well if you've seen uh well, the Ubuntu video and the Hackintosh series of videos that I did back in 2021. So yeah, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get this installed. All right, so first things first, we have to eject the laptop's disk drive here, and we're going to pop in our 64-bit Windows 8.1 lovely DVD right there. And now we just got to get out of the BIOS here. I just booted into this because there's nothing on the hard drive right now. So we're going to save changes that we didn't make. And we're going to have our product key at the ready so that we can enter it in when it asks us. And here's that initial setup screen, which notably does not say Windows 8.1. It just identifies itself as Windows 8. The only way you could tell is by looking at the copyright date down here, which has been changed. Again, kind of indicating that 8.1 was not really a fully fledged on its own Windows release but more of an update to windows 8 a service pack sort of and the first thing it's going to ask us to do is enter our product key and we cannot skip this here we have to enter it in so let's do that so we've got our license agreement we're going to totally read that uh, we're going to do custom advanced of course and we're just going to make a new partition on the unallocated space so let's do that and it should create the system reserved partition. There it is. And we'll install on partition two. It's that simple. I know you guys have seen this probably a million times. I might be exaggerating a little bit there, but you guys have seen this a lot on this channel. We've installed Windows just pretty much every version of Windows so many freaking times. And Windows 8, I mean, I've, I've definitely done videos on 8 and 8.1 before where this might get a little bit uh, repetitive, but... It is the NS support. We have to do this at least one more time on this channel and probably <laughs> probably a few more times in the future. But yeah, we'll let it do its thing and I'll be right back with you guys. And hooray, we're at the personalization screen. So what we got to do is, uh, is it not recognizing my mouse? Well, that's interesting. The mouse is not working, even though the light is on and it's clearly plugged in but the keyboard works so okay um yeah i guess we'll have to use the uh, trackpad on the laptop here temporarily so let's go ahead and name this uh windows 8.1 or we can't do uh period yeah windows 8.1 eos and let's make this a nice green color i usually went with that express we're gonna go with customize here so we can turn off some stuff of course windows 8.1 and windows 8 were not as uh intrusive as windows 10 let's just put it that way with all the privacy settings and stuff you'd have to turn off we'll use windows error reporting that's fine use compatibility list that's fine and here's all the help improve stuff which is turned off by default isn't that nice so microsoft won't uh, get your location data for using location 
notification aware apps, they won't get info about how you use your PC or info about how you use help. All that's turned off by default. Isn't that how it should be? Uh, let's go next here. We've got some more. Well, maybe I spoke too soon. We've got a few other options that are on by default. But some of this is like, let apps use my name and account picture. That would be useful to have on. Use Bing. I mean, we're not going to use Bing at all, so we'll turn that off. Internet Explorer page prediction. We'll turn that off because we're not going to use Internet Explorer. Uh, let apps use my advertising ID. No. Let Windows request my location. No. And yeah, uh, we'll enter our user name. We're just going to go with 81 pc C, and we're not going to bother with a password. And now we get to the wonderful high screen. We're setting things up for you. I actually really liked the Windows 8.1 setup process and Windows 8 setup process. It was just nice. I don't know. I, this screen, especially with the pulsating colors, it's pretty cool. Hooray, it's the start screen in all of its glory. And the mouse still does not work. What is going on? <laughs> You know what, let me try, because I've got this plugged into an Apple keyboard, so I wonder if, like, we gotta plug that back in and have it install a USB hub driver or something. I mean, it was working fine during the setup, so it's, it's until we restarted and actually booted off of the hard drive that it started having issues. Now, there we go. Okay, so we just had to unplug and plug the keyboard back in. So, yeah, the start screen. I mean, you probably know it very well if you ever used Windows 8 and 8.1. And by the way, I'm probably going to use 8 and 8.1 interchangeably because, I mean, again, 8.1 is kind of like an update to Windows 8. Uh, the first thing that I would do is always make the desktop tile extremely large and pretty much remove everything else from the start menu because I didn't really use the start menu uh, really at all. Um, I think there were some, like, I would use the weather app occasionally but i mean even this was like you know i didn't want to have to open up a full screen freaking application just to check the weather so yeah i did not use the start screen really at all and i imagine most people didn't either if you were on a desktop computer so pretty much what i did with windows 8 before you could just boot straight into the desktop like you can on 8.1 i would have everything removed from the start screen and only have the desktop tile to where I would click that and, you know, just, just get here. Though I would occasionally use the start screen for getting a bird's eye view of all my applications. I actually kind of liked this screen. Of course, you have all your modern UI apps over here, but scrolling over here, you've got your Windows applications split up by, you know, category and stuff. So you got accessories, ease of access system, and as you would install stuff, you would have more things populate here. So there you go. There's the start screen. Uh, another interface element is the charms menu over here which is clearly just designed for touchscreen use. It wasn't really ideal to use on a PC without a touchscreen at all, as you had to move your mouse to the bottom right corner of the screen to get access to it, whereas on a tablet you would just swipe out from the right side and you'd get to it that way. But this is also how you could get to the start menu. In fact, this was the start button. That's, a, that's one thing about Windows 8. The start button was technically never removed. It was just moved to another location. You could still get access to the start menu by just moving your mouse to the bottom left, and then that little start thing would appear, and you could click that. Or you could go to the charms menu and go up here and hit the start button. The one thing I absolutely hated about Windows 8, and I think Windows 8.1, no, Windows 8.1 didn't change this. That's right. Um, yeah, the shutdown option. You had to go into the charms menu, go to settings, and then power here to shut down your system. It was so obnoxious. In fact, what I started doing to shut down my system is opening up run and typing in shut down space dash s dash t zero to shut down the system. Or I think you can just do dash s, but like that's how I would shut down my system. I think I might have had a, a shortcut on the desktop at one point. Of course, on a tablet, right, it makes sense because you're not usually going to fully power down a tablet, so that's why it's not a bad thing that it's hidden, kind of, in that menu. But for a PC, like, you turn that off pretty freaking frequently. Like, some people leave it on all the time. I personally turn my computer off at the end of every day when I'm done, unless I'm, like, uploading something overnight. Uh, then I will leave it on. But I'm usually one who turns my computer off when I'm done for the day. So that was definitely uh, rather annoying to have to deal with. And I thought Windows 8.1 added the power options to the start menu. You know, I think that came in 
8.1 update 1 which is kind of another thing is 8.1 it being an update to Windows 8.1 also got an update called update 1 but one thing we can do here is we can go into the settings and we can disable um, I think it's actually in the uh, if we right click on the taskbar here and go to properties I think oh yeah here it is when I sign in or close all apps on a screen go to the desktop instead of start we're definitely going to turn that on and you could also show the apps view automatically which is kind of nice uh, if you didn't want to have to deal with the start screen you could just uh, have it open up to the apps view immediately just to get a, a list of all your applications and kind of have a similar thing to the all programs jump list in the start menu oh and we definitely want this on as well list desktop apps first and start when it's sorted by category there you go isn't that nice so like i said there were definitely some desktop centric features added in windows 8.1 but it still didn't really do enough in my opinion and in many people's opinions to appease desktop users from all the stuff we had taken away from us in windows 8 because i had kind of a, a weird windows upgrade path i went from a windows vista computer right to a windows 8 computer and then i upgraded to 8.1 obviously so i skipped windows 7 completely at least on my main system i had it on my laptop but i didn't use my laptop as much so I never really got to fully experience Windows 7 as my daily use operating system and still haven't because, you know, I use Windows 10 now. So, yeah, going from Vista to Windows 8 was kind of uh, definitely quite the experience for sure. But I got used to it. You always do. I mean, everybody complains whenever companies like Microsoft make changes to their software. It always happens. Then everybody just kind of gets used to it or just accepts it, even if you don't really like it. Um, but I'm definitely glad that Microsoft went back on a lot of the changes they made with Windows 10 especially. Windows 10 is a far better operating system to use on a desktop computer than 8 or 8.1. And of course you had third-party programs that could fix some of the shortcomings of Windows 8, but it was just annoying that you had to download third-party software, in some cases pay for third-party software to just get back functionality that you had. But yeah, that, whoops, I didn't want to grab the entire desktop there. That is uh, Windows 8.1 in all of its glory and as of january 10th microsoft has killed off support for it so if you still happen to use this operating system for whatever reason you might want to look into your upgrade path whether that's upgrading to windows 10 or 11 or getting a new device there is also the option of switching to the embedded version of windows 8.1 or the version of windows based on 8.1 that is still getting support from Microsoft. We kind of have that thing happen with every Windows version that goes out of support, it seems, because it happened with XP and Windows 7. Or you can be a rebel and just keep using Windows 8.1 because you don't want to upgrade to anything else. Um, I would have understood that with XP and Windows 7, not so much with Windows 8.1 though, but hey, you do you. That's totally fine. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is to say for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this last look back. Well, I shouldn't even say that because, I mean, you guys know how this channel is. We're going to probably take a look at Windows 8.1 at some point in the future. I'm sure it'll come up again. But as of right now, that is one last look at Windows 8.1. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.